Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy, drama, and horror show called Into the Dark, The Body. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Professional hitman Wilkes successfully kills his target in a lavish apartment. As he enjoys the victim's expensive wine and maggot-infested cheese, he receives a call from his employer, asking if the job is done. Before he answers, he goes on a long monologue about the cheese called Kasu Marzu, where the maggot's stomach acids make the cheese rot faster, thus making it richer and smoother. However, he insists that one must eat the entire thing as the maggots make the experience wonderful. After taking a bite, he confirms that the task is done. Now, all that's left to do is to deliver the body by 2 a.m. So he covers it in plastic and drags it to the lobby. A group of women sees him, but they only compliment him since it's Halloween, making them think he's only in costume and the body is a prop. As Wilkes gets to his car, he finds that someone slashed his tires. So he desperately searches for another mode of transportation. Just as he drags the body away, he bumps into three young people on their way to a party. Alan gets pissed at Wilkes, but he immediately becomes a fan when he sees his cool costume. The same goes with his friend Nick, but the girl named Dorothy stays unimpressed, calling him the British American Psycho. Alan pleads with Wilkes to join them at the party they're going to, promising to give him a ride afterward. He believes that his costume will make a huge statement and a stunning grand entrance. At first, Wilkes declines, but when the police appear to investigate the vandalized cars, he's left with no option but to say yes to escape their eyes. Later, they arrive at a wild Halloween party in Jack Baker's condo. Alan tells the group to wait for him as he looks for Jack, who makes his grand entrance on the dance floor as Hannibal Lecter. Meanwhile, Wilkes has strayed from the group and gets approached by a woman named Maggie. Maggie compliments his costume, then defends Marie Antoinette, whom she's dressed as. She rambles about how Marie Antoinette was reduced to being a caricature of men's prejudice toward women, making them look frivolous and ditzy. At first, Wilkes is uninterested, but when she asks about his body prop, he begins talking about the perfect murder, noting that it's easier to dispose of a dead body on Halloween than on any normal evening. Maggie laughs, Thinking it's a joke, Wilkes smugly explains that hiding the evidence is not possible, but diverting the evidence to make the murder look like something else is better. He stresses that one can do anything if they don't give people the time to decide that it's something other than what they claim it is. Noticing two men drinking to horror movies, Wilkes decides to leave. However, Maggie offers to drive him, so he asks if anyone expects her tonight. When she says no, he accepts her offer. As they make their way back to the party, Wilkes approaches Alan, insisting that they promised him a ride if he goes with them. Jack, however, points out that he already agreed to Maggie taking his car, so they should enjoy some shots in the meantime. Left with no choice, they join Jack and his friends inside a private room. Immediately, Wilkes asks for the car keys, but Jack, being a little high, begins to provoke Wilkes. Everyone else notices that Wilkes isn't enjoying it at all, so the atmosphere quickly becomes awkward. Suddenly, everyone notices that the body twitches, so Wilkes plays it off smoothly, saying that it occasionally does that. When Jack suggests that it's an animatronic, Wilkes suggests kicking it to fix it, so he does just that. However, as he stomps on the body's head, the feet suddenly curl in response. Because of this, Jack looks closely at it, and it cuffs out blood. Everybody freaks out, finally realizing that it's a real body. Jack tries to escape, but Wilkes pulls out a knife, forcing him to back away. After this, they ask Wilkes if he's a hitman, and he doesn't deny it. Jack says that he can't just kill people, but Wilkes proves that he can by darting the knife at Nick's forehead. Everyone panics, but Maggie only looks at Wilkes in fascination. As Jack begs for his life, Wilkes knows that killing is natural, only lost when their neuron pathways misfire during evolution, thus causing insanity. He insists that they're only meant to survive, but self-awareness forced them to ask if they matter more than that. Although everyone else finds this insane, Maggie agrees with him, revealing that she's had an urge to kill someone for most of her life. Wilkes is baffled at this, but he focuses on getting Jack's car keys. Jack points to where it is, so Wilkes commands Maggie to get it. As soon as she opens a drawer, an alarm gets triggered, and Wilkes gets distracted by the clown animatronics pouncing at him. This allows Jack and the others to escape, bringing the body with them. 
As soon as he locks the room, Jack immediately announces that a killer is at the party. However, the crowd perceives this as an act and cheers for him instead. Because of this, Jack decides to leave the party with Alan, Dorothy, and the body. Meanwhile, Wilkes threatens to kill Maggie out of anger, but she assures him that she can find an alternative escape route because she's been working as a coder for Jack, so she knows how his mind works. Elsewhere, the trio arrives in a parking lot where they argue about taking the body. Alan insists that turning the murderer in might get them a reward, but Dorothy just points out that the victim might still be alive, so they should focus on that. Jack insists that it shouldn't be their problem, so Dorothy plots to surrender the body to the cops so it stops being their problem. Remembering the cops out in the street, Dorothy tells Jack to rush to them. Jack finds a cop outside and asks for help, though the officer thinks he's just drunk. Still, the officer goes with him back to the parking lot. In the room, Maggie discovers a coded remote lock from the back of the Count of Monte Cristo book. As she tries to figure out the code, Wilkes blows powder on the keypad, revealing the thumbprints that correspond to the code. The door opens, and Maggie expresses that they're a good team, but Wilkes bluntly says that they're not one. Meanwhile, the policeman sees the body and thinks it's a prop. When Dorothy tries to explain, the officer pulls out his gun and calls for backup claiming that the trio are hostile. To prove what they're saying is true, Jack rips the body bag to reveal the victim's face, and they all stop as they recognize the victim as a celebrity. Finally, the officer asks them to explain, but the elevator dings, announcing Wilkes and Maggie's arrival. The trio immediately points him out as the killer, so the officer aims his gun at him. However, the friends doubt the policeman's capabilities, so they use him as bait while they escape with a body. When the officer notices them leaving, he gets distracted and accidentally shoots Maggie in the arm. With the officer stunned, Wilkes slits his throat with ease and takes his badge. Afterward, Wilkes chases after the trio, but they're already gone. Because of this, Maggie offers to track them using their phones. Before they leave, Wilkes bandages up Maggie's wound. Meanwhile, the trio buys a trolley from a homeless guy to carry the body in. While walking, Wilkes receives a message from his client and assures him that he'll deliver the body on time. Suddenly, Maggie comes up with an idea. She takes out Jack's phone, which she got from the private room, noting how Wilkes mentioned that murder requires diverting the evidence to something else. Soon, Alan receives photos of Nick and the policeman's dead bodies from Jack's phone. The photos are followed by messages that frame them for the murderers. Overwhelmed, the trio starts blaming each other for their situation, until Dorothy yells at them to focus on their current problem. Finally, they decide to destroy the evidence. Armed with his knowledge from Breaking Bad, Alan suggests chopping the body into small parts and bleaching it until it dissolves. Elsewhere, Maggie reveals a gun from under a costume, which she pockets for easier access. Wilkes asks why she carries one, and she explains that it makes her feel safer. Wondering about her demeanor, Wilkes reminds her that he kills people, but she points out that he hasn't killed her. She flirts by taking a cigarette, but he takes it away and continues their mission. The two go to a bar where they clean themselves up. As she does, Maggie wonders if it's crazy that she's sticking with Wilkes. However, she reasons that he's a rare kind of man who's smart, strong, and employed. Thus, he can handle her. They later take their drinks at a booth, where Wilkes easily steals a stranger's laptop. As Maggie uses it to track down the others, she exchanges playful looks with Wilkes, who's still amazed that she's still sticking around. Meanwhile, the trio breaks into a hardware store to gather materials to destroy the body. Before they proceed, they stare at it for a while, still unable to process that it's someone who has 20 million Twitter followers. At the bar, Maggie successfully runs the codes needed to track the other's phones. As she waits for it to process, she encourages Wilkes to play a Q&A session with her. Maggie learns that Wilkes' employer comes from the dark web, and he gets paid in large amounts of cryptocurrency. Maggie is impressed that Wilkes doesn't worry about the consequences of his choices. She reveals that she took Nick's bloody glasses from Jack's private room as Wilkes' lifestyle excited her. Thinking that they're sharing a moment, Maggie closes her eyes and waits for Wilkes to kiss her. However, Wilkes' employer calls him about the dead cop, so he goes outside. There, he learns that his client is watching, which wasn't part of the deal. With two hours left on the clock, Wilkes realizes that he needs to retrieve and deliver the body, or else he'll pay for it with his life. Shortly after, 
Maggie hacks into Alan's phone and discovers that they're in a hardware store. Based on his search history, she also learns that they're trying to destroy the body. Wilkes tells Maggie to hack into the local police department's security footage and remove the clip wherein he killed the cop. She does as she's told, but she also sends the clip of the trio to Alan's phone just to mess with them. After this, Maggie and Wilkes immediately set out to find the trio. Meanwhile, the trio takes turns in destroying the body by smashing the face, then burning the fingerprints. However, they receive the clip from Maggie and immediately freak out. Knowing that they need to get the job done fast, they decide to burn the body in an incinerator at a nearby funeral home. As they cruise the streets, they're unaware that the body is leaking, leaving behind an obvious blood trail. As expected, Wilkes and Maggie spot the blood trail that leads to the cemetery. Maggie boldly takes Wilkes' hand and leads him, but he stops midway and says she's the first person who understands him. At the height of the moment, they share a kiss. Falling for the hitman, Maggie suggests being together after he finishes his mission. However, Wilkes stabs her and says that they were never a team. After this, he takes Jack's phone and Nick's glasses before leaving her to die. Meanwhile, the trio reaches the funeral home and tries to reason with the security guard to let them in. However, the guard suddenly freezes after a knife darts through his head. To their horror, Wilkes is now standing before them. Quickly, Alan takes the guard's pistol, and they enter the funeral home while dragging the body with them. However, as they lock the door, Wilkes disappears, so Jack freaks out and flees. Alan breaks down and apologizes to Dorothy for getting them in this mess. Thinking that they're sharing a moment, he leans to kiss her, only to end up getting turned down. After this, Alan drags the body up into the hall while trying to find the incinerator, while Dorothy stays behind with a pistol in case Wilkes returns. True enough, he does, and teases her with the keys from the guard that can get him inside. Seeing this, Dorothy runs away. Elsewhere, Jack stares at his reflection and gives himself an encouraging pep talk. Unbeknownst to him, Wilkes is following his every move. Wilkes calls out his name, so Jack runs for his life and ends up in the visitation area. There, he desperately asks God to save him, and he promises to be a righteous man in return. After this, he hides in a casket and prays that Wilkes won't find him. Thinking that the coast is clear, he opens the casket, but finds Wilkes standing in front of him. He gouges his eyes until he dies, then places all the evidence inside the casket. With 40 minutes on the clock, Wilkes sets out to kill Dorothy and Alan. He finds them in the cremation chamber, where Dorothy points the pistol at him. However, in Alan's attempt to strangle Wilkes, Dorothy loses the pistol. Instead, she stabs him with a scalpel before searching for the pistol, while Alan holds Wilkes down. However, Wilkes slashes Alan's hand with a scalpel and bites off his finger. Afterward, he knocks Dorothy unconscious. Wilkes then stabs a tube into Alan's chest and turns on the machine that stuffs the poor man's body with embalming fluid. He also stabs a knife into his skull and raises a tray on Alan's face, showing him what death looks like. As he turns around, Wilkes finds Dorothy pointing the pistol at him. She shoots, but Wilkes shields himself with a metal tray. To his surprise, the bullet rebounds into Dorothy's forehead, killing her. After this, Wilkes takes a moment to appreciate the crime scene. His eyes land on the incinerator, so he cremates Alan and Dorothy's bodies together. With 25 minutes left, Wilkes finally disposes of the body in the designated area. Just then, he receives a call from his employer and assures him that all the complications have been dealt with. However, a bullet suddenly pierces his chest, revealing the shooter as Maggie. Angry for getting stabbed and left to die, she presses on Wilkes' bullet wound in revenge. She then suffocates him with a plastic wrapper from the victim's body and notices a police tape, coming up with an idea. Moments after, she drags Wilkes' body on the streets, after wrapping it up as he did with his previous victim. As Maggie goes on her way, people compliment her costume and prop. Finally, she reaches the dumpsters and leaves Wilkes' body to rot. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.